Hey guys, welcome to Quilt 101. My name is Emily and today I'm going to teach you how to make this gorgeous farmhouse style gingham table runner. So here is what comes in our table runner gingham pre-cut kits. So we're going to have all of the fabric that is pre-cut and labeled. And for this kit, all of this fabric is from Art Gallery Fabrics, which is the softest fabric ever. It is the best. It'll wash beautifully and will last you for a long time. So we have all the fabric for the top that's pre-cut. And then we also have backing and binding. Um, and these are pre-cut to, um, to size as well. So what is nice about this pattern is that you don't have to lay anything out and restack it to sew it. You can just put the fabric right in front of your sewing machine and just grab it from these stacks to sew. Um, so what is fun about this quilt is that it's you just use a pattern. So for the first block, you want it to be white. And then we're going to go in with the medium color. So fabric A and fabric B. And we're just going to put these right sides together and we're gonna set the machine to a quarter inch and we are going to sew this. Now with this quilt, we get a chain piece, which is awesome because it just makes the project go really fast. So for this next set, we're not gonna trim the thread. We're just going to take the next block, which is fabric B, and we're gonna take a fabric C, which is the dark one. We're gonna put those right sides together line those up and stitch and to continue with the chain we're not going to trim the thread we're just going to leave it and now we're going to grab the next fabric which is the light the white which is fabric a and fabric b and then you we just kind of keep repeating this step um, with this one there's going to be five different five different rows. And so we're just gonna continue this pattern for those five rows. So I just finished sewing the fifth row and now I am cutting the thread. And so whenever you pull it out, you can see you have the start of your five rows. And so now to continue on with the top, we're gonna go back to the very first row we did and we're gonna open up the fabric. So you can see how we have the white and the light gray. So the next is we're gonna add a white to this. And we're just going to line up the fabric, get it all nice and square together. And we're going to sew it as usual. And then to continue with the chain piecing, we're gonna, we have the second row now, we're gonna open it up and now we're gonna add the light gray. So these patterns are really easy. The top, like the rows one, three, and five are the white and the light gray and rows two and four are the light gray and the dark gray. And we'll have this in our pattern so you can follow along with that as well. Um, but I mean, it's pretty easy. It's only three colors. <laughs> so now we're just gonna keep sewing. And then as we get to each new row, we're just gonna continue to open it up and we're gonna add the next block onto, um, onto the row and sew it. And we're gonna continue doing this with the entire quilt top. Now we'll have in the pattern how many like squares go in each row. Um, so just make sure to refer to that um, whenever you get to that point. I just finished chain piecing all of the pieces together and you can really see the table runner starting to come together. I love these gray colors. It's perfect for year round. So now what we got to do is we need to go through and we need to trim all of these threads that are connecting the pieces. I'll have my mom come through and kind of show you these threads right here that need to be cut. Um, so we're just going to cut all of those and so all of the rows are separate and then I will meet you over at the ironing board. 
So I've gone through and trimmed all the threads so you can see that all the rows are um, disconnected. And so now I got some of our, they're called Merrily's numbered pins. They're the best. We sell them on our site, but they're a bunch of pins that are numbered. And I just went down and I put a number in the top left of each of the rows because this is what is going to help us know how to iron the blocks. So the reason that we numbered the rows is because depending on the number, we're gonna iron the rows a certain way. So we're gonna iron these seams and so they nestle together. So what that means is we're gonna have, some of the seams are gonna be going this way, some of the seams are gonna be that way. And so whenever you go to sew the seams together, they like, <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> they interlock with each other and so they lie nice and flat. And so to do that, we're going to start with row one. And how I like to iron my rows is the rows that are odd, I like to start with the row that has the pin in it. So this is number one. So I'm going to start with the side that has the number one in it. And to press this, we're just gonna hold up the fabric at about 90 degree angle. And then we're gonna take the iron and we're just going to run the iron over the seam. And so it presses the seam going this way. This is, an, this is really long, so you gotta have to kind of do it in a few different chunks. We're just gonna keep pressing so the seam is going to the left. All right, so that way whenever you turn the block around, you can see how all the seams are pointing that way. So number one is done. So now I'm going to grab row number two. And because row number two is an even number, I am going to start ironing on the side opposite of the pin. So we have the pin right here. So I am going to start on the other side. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to hold the row up at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm just going to use the iron to press the seam down to the left. All right, so now that we have row two done, we're just gonna continue doing the same thing with the rest of the rows. And, um, and then after we have them ironed, we can go back to the sewing machine and stitch them together. And then the top is done. It's such a quick and fun project. So I have my rows one and two right sides together and I am just um, sewing them a quarter inch. But I wanna show you why these nesting seams are so fun. So I am just going to sew along at a quarter inch and then when I get to a seam, I wanna show you. So do you see how on the bottom the seam is pointing that way? And on the top, the seam is pointing this way. And so you can physically like feel whenever they kind of like snap into place whenever they are, um, whenever they like interlock with each other. And so then you just kind of hold it down and you sew through. But so what it does is whenever you nest seams, is it not only gives you a flatter seam, but it gives you crisper corners as well. So that way your corners perfectly line up. It is so nice. Um, and so I just kind of use these. So like whenever, so I just finished sewing the seam. And so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of interlock to this next Thing right here and then just kind of use this as a guide to sew and then I just kind of keep doing that and so I am just going to interlock the next seam and then just sew right on top of it then you just keep doing that with all of these rows until the top is put together I just finished sewing rows one and two together and I'll just kind of open this up and show you how these beautiful seams, look at that beautiful, like perfect intersection every single time. That's what you get whenever you nestle the seams. So now you're just gonna take this to the ironing board and you can, it doesn't really matter which way you iron this open. You can either do it 
Um, you can press it to either side or you can just press it open down the middle. Um, and so I'm just gonna keep working on sewing these rows together and then the top will be done. This top is looking amazing, you guys. I've gone ahead and sandwiched it with the batting and the backing. We have lots of tutorials on those if you wanna see how to do that. So now I'm just getting ready to quilt it. And I wanna show you um, just a really simple way on how you can quilt on your home machine. So I'm wanting to do just like a really traditional fun crosshatch quilting, which is just like a bunch of like X's going through like the gingham. Um, so I have just like my normal cutting ruler and then this is called a hair marker it's just like a piece of plastic and it has kind of like a sharp end on one side and so what i do is i just take my quilting ruler and i am just going to line it up with all of the diagonal so you can see how this kind of goes through the center of each of the squares and you just kind of line it up the best you can there you go all right and so now i just take this hair marker and I am just pressing it in and it's gonna kind of create a crease in the fabric. So whenever you take it up, you can see there's that crease in it. And so what I do is um, I, with my sewing machine, I use this crease as my guide. So I kind of stitch right where that line is. And so that's kind of similar to how the quilting will look. So I, kind of, I just go through it's a little time intensive, but it's really not that bad once you get in the groove of it. So I kind of go through each of these intersections right here for the entire table top or the entire table runner. And I'm gonna use those, those as my quilting guides. And then whenever um, I finished marking all the lines going this way, I will sew it. And then I'll take the ruler and I'll go the opposite way. So then I'll have it going, lining up like this, same method, and then I'll quilt it going the other way. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Um, I will come back and show you the final result. I just finished quilting this table runner and look how gorgeous it turned out. I love, 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 love how the quilting is. We added the binding to it, so this is all done. Look how pretty it is. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this tutorial. I love how this turned out. I just think this is the perfect table runner to keep on your table. I mean, really year round, you can just add different um, kind of colors to it with accessories to kind of make it a little bit more seasonal. Um, I just want to thank you again for joining me and have a great day.